Ji, thank you very much once again for giving us this exclusive, very special interview like every year after the budget. Uh, through our News 18 network, uh, through CNBC, CNBC Awaaz, uh, CNN News 18, uh, you will be able to reach every nook and corner of the country and investors are glued into moneycontrol.com, tracking every twist and turn of the budget. Thank you so much. My first question, uh, a somewhat obvious question, uh, no SOPs, no populist measures. Even in 2019 interim budget, the government had announced some SOPs, you know, like tax rebates. There were some announcements for the farmers, but none this time. Uh, seems like a very confident prime minister going into 2024 elections. You've never looked more relaxed to me before. Uh, what was going on in your mind while drafting this? Well, thank you for having me uh, after the budget, like every year. It's a great opportunity to talk to your viewers and also for others who are watching uh, this program more with the keenness to know about the Indian economy. Yes, the budget yesterday did not have any SOPs announced. Um, we treated it like a true vote on account, an interim budget before an election, and also an interim budget which is being presented with the clear understanding that the several programs which were launched with empowerment of citizens in mind over the last 10 years are reaching the ground and the beneficiaries are already on their own speaking about it. The power of word of mouth is very strong. So when a beneficiary gets truly the benefit and without any middleman playing a role in it, they really understand that the intent of the government is what they've said is what is getting executed. So I place a lot of trust in the word of mouth, which has helped in schemes like Ujwala, PM Awaz Yojana, PM Mudra Yojana, Swanidhi Yojana, all of which have benefited the small households, small uh, people who want to do their business and who don't have money to give for collateral, no properties to give. So this government has actually, because of the vision with which Prime Minister is committed to serve this country, is actually serving the common people in letter and spirit. And that is recognized by the people themselves. It's not as if you are saying and you are showing target numbers, you are showing achievement numbers. No. The people in the ground are saying about it. Yes. I've got it. And so is my neighbor. So is the neighbor of that household and so on. So, and that is why I have used an expression, and I mean it when I've said it, that this is secularism in action. This is where we have not shown any difference between members belonging to this community or that community, this religion or that religion, or somebody's relative and not relative. No difference. The project reaches the ground for everybody who deserves to get it. And if they are eligible, they get it, irrespective of who they are. And therefore, in every way, the principle of empowerment, the Sabka Saat, Sabka Vishwa, Sabka uh, Vikas, has been executed in every way. And that is the sense of confidence that the blessings of the people are not just at the time when we gave promises, but the blessings are even now coming in abundantly to say, yes, you've kept up your word. Yeah. It is what the Prime Minister has also been talking about, the forecasts, as he calls it. That's right. You know, the poor women, farmers, youth. So That's I think right. that is the cornerstone of this part, of this speech. Uh, Nirmala Ji, you've steered the economy in difficult times. You know, if I look at your last, uh, last five years, uh, there's been the pandemic. Right now, two wars are going on. Uh, even then, we are projected to grow at 7.3%. Now, if I were to look at the non nominal, nominal GDP, which has grown uh, only 10.5%, uh, consider an inflation of 4, 4.5%, uh, do you think that 7% itself would be challenging? I mean, do you think it is realistic for us to grow on those lines? The chief economic advisor has also commented um, in his uh, preface, he's elaborated on how 7% uh, is not difficult 
to achieve. Um, globally also, the various organizations which look at economies of all countries, like IMF for instance, has also enhanced their own assessment. So, upgrading our growth estimates is not just singularly our business. People are seeing that fundamentally a lot of activities are happening. The robustness of the economy has not slackened anywhere. It has maintained its, you know, the, the, the buoyancy with which things are happening, not just revenue collection when I'm talking of buoyancy. So there is reason to believe, yes, it is possible. And the deflator, not just the inflation, but the deflator itself uh, is constantly, meaning we are looking at controlling inflation, the other factors fall in place, so the deflator itself then plays a role. And therefore, uh, we are confident that on the one hand, we'll be able to manage inflation, and on the other, to keep the robustness in growth so that it is sustained growth. We have made every effort to look at both growth driving elements and inclusivity driving elements so that nobody is left out from this growth process, both to contribute yes. and to gain from. Indeed. Uh, you know, something that has been commented enough uh, and you've got a lot of accolades for it in this budget. Uh, if you look at the fiscal glide path, I think you've beaten estimates. Uh, you know, this year you've projected 5.1 next year, so that also looks promising. Uh, what is your message to the sovereign rating agencies? You're expecting an upgrade? Well, I would think that they do their job, but periodically it's our business also to bring it to their notice that economy, particularly emerging market economy like India, despite the odds, we are doing a lot of reforms, systemic reforms, which actually you're seeing is bearing the results now. If only Prime Minister Modi hadn't pressed the pedal, let's say the revving pedal, the accelerator um, during COVID, even as we are managing COVID, we will have to attend to reforms and continue doing the reforms. The Atmanirbhar Bharat announcements yes. were all infused with so much of reform measures. Otherwise, we wouldn't have eliminated more than 68,000 rules, which were just so archaic and were becoming instruments for rent-seeking people. Yes. So, systemic reforms have continued. Whether it was pre-COVID, GST and IBC, together with very many other yes. reforms like professionalizing public sector banks and so on, the emphasis on reform has given us adequate rewards and we'll continue doing that. That is why even in the budget, we have emphasized on transparency. We have emphasized on getting everything on board the budget process itself, rather than keeping it out of, outside of the budget or underneath the carpet. These are not small steps, and that has been consistently done in the last four, five years. And before that, as I said, IBC or banking reforms, the five major uh, you know, recognition, ours as we say, Absolutely. of the problem. So, to list it, there are so many, some small, some very big. The small ones having very big uh, um, implication in making the economy much more cleaner and open and transparent. The bigger ones which are bearing results in terms of the money that you collect in GST. Yes. These are not uh, small steps. That's so, uh, that is the one which I would play as uh, important indicators which rating agencies should look at comprehensively rather than look at just one detail here, one detail there. Macroeconomic stability is also very well kept up. Yes. No, glad you mentioned reforms. I think big message coming from you that the government will con continue on the road Absolutely. for reforms. Uh, you know, what are the, and I've, I've said this to you before, that, you know, uh, cutting the rich tax last year, you know, in an election year, before that, you know, cutting the corporate rate tax. I mean, you've taken some bold measures. What are the next level of reforms that we can expect from, from you? Broadly, I mean, directionally. No, first of all, as I said, the system to become more transparent 
more things will have to be done in order to make sure that we work together with states. It's one thing for the union government to work on those areas which are exclusively with the central government. But where, uh, where there are overlaps, there are some states which have come about enthusiastically to say, yes, we should benefit also from this vibrancy which results after such uh, measures are taken. And therefore, when reforms are talked about, we normally always say three levels where it has to be carried out with the same vigor. Yes. The central government, the state government, and then the local bodies. Yes. Now, working with the state governments has already started happening. The last few years, you see very many areas where we are working together. The local body level, the municipal urban local bodies, the panchayats, we need to have greater um, interchange of ideas and working together with them also. That will also continue now. Okay. Finance Minister, if I were to ask you this one question, with the exception of Air India, no strategic privatization has taken place, any significant. You know, whether it is IDBI, Concord, uh, SCI, banks, uh, why, why has your government sort of repeatedly kind of underperformed on this disinvestment aspect? I mean, is the thinking changing within the government? Are you looking at sort of strategic sales and not maybe offer to sell uh, completely? Is there some shift in the thinking? I would want you to, first of all, put that question into the frame that I have laid in the matter of public sector enterprises policy. If a policy framework has been announced, and in that we have said that there are only core strategic sectors which government recognizes, where the government will be having a minimal presence. Right. And even in those sectors, private sector will be allowed to, or it will be completely open for them to participate in total, in the sense there will not be any one sector inclusive of the core strategic sector which will be exclusively reserved for public sector, whereby consolidation will have to happen to make them big enough for a big country like India. Yes. Efficiencies will have to be brought in. Their values will have to be increased. So this question of yours will have to fit into that frame. Yes. 